Dare, and this this match is between Giving Gnome the Django and Awesome Explosion plus Lolly. I do not know where they get these team names from. They probably choose them randomly out of a hat. I know that I have a hat in my room that if I needed to, I could write names on a paper and put them in. And what they do is they write they write down um like first word, second word, third word, fourth word, and they just throw them all in there and they draw four yeah. and then they get that. Just pick four random words. Well, first they have to pick the number of random words that they're going to decide on. Oh, they roll a dice for that. Yeah, or a yeah, die, yeah. excuse me, that's not correct. Maybe they roll multiple dice. Who knows? Lulu is banned out. Sad to see that. Kazix was also taken out, so is Kassadin. Pretty standard bands here. Wukong, Kazix, Timo, and Nidalee, the chat bands. By Talon, Kassadin, and Lulu so far. Talon, who is that targeted against? Uh, Armed Weasel. Gotta be. Armed Weasel's a really good Talon player. Other really good Talon players are High People's Dynov and Sifu Calvin. I know this because one time I wanted to make a Dominion Breakdown about Talon, but I couldn't get any of the top Talon players, so it never got made. Made me very sad. Well, so for anyone who's watching the VOD, the reason that the Teemo ban is in larger letters is because for some reason my lower left ban, whichever champion it happens to be, for some reason I can't resize it. It happened last week after somebody banned Kale, and now it's stuck being larger than the other three. So, that's just well, coincidence. Also, we hate Teemo so much that we just want to emphasize, you cannot play Teemo. You cannot do that. You're not allowed to do that. Thank God. I just hate his ban. I just, I just hate his blind. If they took... If they took, like, 0.15 seconds off of his blind, uh, like, per rank, for a total of, like, minus 7, 7, then I'd be really happy with it. Because his blind is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But it's, like, the most iconic thing about his character. But please, just less blind duration, man. 0.6. 0.75. Oh yeah, I was just making up numbers. But yeah, that sounds great. Let's take let's take that off. I wanted to say I So was it's really two point five so that turned into one point seven five. That's great. That's perfect. Yeah, let's do that. Sona pick. I like Sona a lot. Sana if you pronounce it incorrectly. It's probably gonna be Jana for Sportal, but they can pick that up whenever because they know that Awesome Explosion is not going to pick up Jana. Dude, Awesome Explosion needs to do an AoE old comp so that they can just have an Awesome Explosion. You, you guys gotta do that. I, I'm sure that at least some of you are watching this stream. And you should, you should make an Awesome Explosion happen at some point. It's kind of cool to see Lolly Brigade playing again. Uh, he hasn't been able to play regularly for quite a while. Um, we talked about it a little bit while we were at MLG Anaheim. I don't know if that, actually, that Porsche actually made it into the interview that I did with him or not. Which, uh, by the way, uh, the Lolly Brigade and Fancy Wolf, I interviewed those guys at MLG Anaheim. If you haven't seen those, along with the Gnome Sane interview that I did, you can go there and uh, check those out. Uh, they're a little... They're from a few months back. Uh, if you guys like Infinite Crisis, we also interviewed um, a couple guys that work for Turbine, including their lead balance designer. And... Um, we also interviewed um, a, a local StarCraft player from Arizona. Um, that was actually playing in uh, MLG's open bracket. So, if you guys are interested in my live event media, you should check it out there. There haven't been any live events for me to go to in a while, because there just haven't been. I might be going to MLG Columbus uh, later on this month. I uh, still don't know for sure on that. And if you guys also want to uh, check out more of my media and commentary, um, go to youtube.com slash VatoClan. And uh, next weekend, or no, two weekends from now, excuse me, we are, there's going to be another Dominion Showdown. So if you guys want to play in the next LOL Pro Dominion Showdown, go sign up for that. Because they're going to do another one, and it pays out cash. I'm sure someone can dig up the link to it. And we just bring all the teams out to play, that's what I want to do. You got plenty of weeks to make a team and get it, get it together. So it's going to be Sivir, not Jinx. I'm a little disappointed. But I'm also kind of hyped to see this because I haven't seen too, too much new Sivir, and I think she's pretty good. Her ult is definitely a lot better than it was before, but she does still only have 500 range. 500 range is like the fifth worst tier for a ranged champion, but I would say it's the fourth worst tier because Fiddlesticks 480 does not count as a real attack range because, come on, why is there one champion in the game that has 480 attack range instead of 475? 
I don't yeah, know. There's a John Um. See, the problem, um, a couple people that were asking or PMing me about it, uh, the, the problem with me going to MLG Columbus is I don't know if I have a way to get home or not because I only fly if the plane, I fly for free if the plane doesn't sell all of its seats. However, the downside is that's so close to Thanksgiving, the odds of that happening are really, really low. So I can get there, no problem. Uh, I can probably find someone to stay with. I've had a couple offers, but I don't know how I'm getting home. That plane ticket's like $200. So that's all I've got to say about that since I stirred that up a moment ago. Uh, and are we going to see... What are we going to see for this last couple of picks here? Um, I'm really liking the toaster oven going with the J4 brand. Uh, it's not the full-on brick oven unless you have uh, an Annie involved as well. It looks like it's going to be Olaf locked into that last slot. So Olaf got buffed in the most recent patch, which I didn't read the patch notes for because I went to Sanders game and said... But that's okay. Olaf got buffed. He's now... I, I think he's actually a lot stronger now. He's not going to be able to be CC'd. There's a lot of CC that he would like to be able to dodge. In particular, Olaf is pretty much a hard counter to Janna. Because all Janna really wants to do is peel people off of her precious little sliver. Who she needs to keep alive very, very much. And whom she loves very, very much. And Olaf says, no, screw you! You can't do that to me! And then he runs at... Jonna's precious sliver and kills Jonna's precious sliver until the sliver is dead. Aww. Sivir doesn't like to be died. She comes with a spell shield. Yeah, she does have a spell shield, So, but she's probably going to want to be using that spell shield on either something out of LeBlanc. If you can spell shield any part of LeBlanc's combo, suddenly LeBlanc can't necessarily hunt her to zero you, and you can actually live when otherwise you would die. Or, in particular, she would really, really like to spell shield the Crescendo. And Crescendo has a slow enough travel time that you can actually, if you're really, really good, which Baby Pop definitely is, you can actually spell shield the Crescendo. So, I don't expect that the spell shield will be used against Olaf in particular, but Sivir does have damage. that ability to not take too, too much from Olaf. Well, hey, what's up, uh, what's up, Freak, in the chat, man? Oh, Freak! Freak, Thanks I for... have to ask you a question. How do you know that Annie is going to ult you if you face check into her bush? That's that's my question. All right, well, it's anyway. Pretty much a guarantee, -vers. Oh dear, puns of damage. Okay. <laughs> All right, you can you can go back. I just wanted to say, hey, thanks for checking out the stream, Freak, man. Really cool for you to stop by. <laughs> that was uh, that was pretty awesome. Thanks for watching the show. Someone dig up that picture of him with the Dominion sign for anyone who wasn't around for that from MLG Dallas last year. I'm sure that exists somewhere. Uh, Freak's a cool guy. And look at these two team comps here. Uh, for some reason, my, my, my screen still shows Sauron having not locked in, but that's a little weird. Um, I'm really interested to see how Olaf performs here because... With some of the changes made recently to Olaf, he's pretty scary, and the fact that he sort of ignores CC is... It's such a CC skirmish-centric map like this. Olaf can get away from so many people. He It's hard to one-on-one -on -one him at all. It's also really hard to delay him. You can't really set Olaf up, because you always have that threat of, is Ragnarok going to be used? If that happens, he's not going to care about Janna or Bran stun slow. He's just going to dive through and whack BB Pop as hard as he can. And that's going to be pretty brutal. Uh, what he does care about is the Driving Cataclysm. So if Parkers can get uh, Corvel locked up inside of that and Baby Pop is outside of it, or even if Baby Pop is inside of it and Corvel is stuck outside of it, that's going to be great. Yeah, he hasn't found a way to ignore terrain yet. I'm, sh I'm sure that's coming in a patch someday. He'll just get so angry, he just starts walking through walls and stuff. I actually think that would be a really, really cool ultimate for a champion to have, though, is the ability to just walk through walls for, like... X number of seconds, like 8 or 10 or something like that, and just go through terrain like a, some, some sort of super ghost. Like Cassidin. Yes, but with actual, like, having to walk, though, so they're still, like, targetable. It's not a blink and stuff like that. That'd be really cool. I, like uh, Kazakh's getting a pentakill. Yes. You know, actually, um, I don't, I don't think you were here for it. Uh, Armed Weasel, Ryan Gold, he's the only person to have a pentakill in competition in Dominion. He got it with Draven. Oh my god. I wish I had seen that. Yeah, you can uh, you can find it on the internet. Uh, I think someone actually clipped it out and made a highlight of it. 
Um, I forget that guy's YouTube name, but it was cool that he clipped that out, because uh, it saved me the trouble of having to do it. Okay, let's put these uh, two team names up here at the top. Uh, so this round, this will be the third round today, uh, is going to be Giving Gnome the Dango versus Awesome Explosion plus Lolly. Uh, Giving Gnome the Dango's team consisting of Emperor High Peoples playing as Brand, Mad Supportal playing as Janna, BB Pop playing as Sivir, a Parkhurst playing as Jarvan the Fourth, and Sauron playing as Malzahar. I'm one half of your commentators, I am Gander, and commentating with me is... I am Ryan Gold River, and the other half of your players for this match is Awesome Explosion plus Lolly. It is Fancy Wolf playing Urgot, the Lolly Brigade on Sona, Practice Yellow playing Maokai, Armed Weasel on LeBlanc, and Coravel on Olaf. And Mistletoe LeBlanc is an awesome skin. I really want to see someone cosplay that because it's really not that difficult. You just need a need a, need a corset, bodice, whichever. And uh, I know there's a technical term for it, but I don't remember it. And you just need a, a cape and some stuff. It shouldn't be too hard to put together, but I've never seen one before. Where'd my cursor go? Hey, there we go. It's back now. Okay, so starting items. Seeing boots, prospectors, items, everything seeming pretty standard so far. And take a look at Brand with that support biscuit. See him going down in the bottom lane. Looks like he's going to be wanting that. Does he have the cooldown reduction from that? Yeah, it looks like he's got a bunch of base cooldown reduction. Yeah. So, that's one of the things you'll see. Uh, you'll see AP characters going to support for that. Uh, nothing else looks... How do I turn gold on? I guess there's a key for that. Uh, looks like LeBlanc opening with uh, early Press guys X. components. Press X and it'll toggle. X? Toggle. Whoa! That's exciting. I should just, like, right, spam so that. Peoples and Sauron are both sitting at the bottom, but the CV already happened, so they can't really get clairvoyance again before the game actually starts. There's actually no CV on the side of giving Gnome the Dango. So they are going to be CV-less, and we'll see if they can see what's going on without CV, or if they will year off into the wrong direction. Let's follow the new Sivir model up to the intersection. I like the new boomerang blade graphic. How did she throw that? I think it's really hard to see. To see. Ha! To, to see. No. Yeah, to you know CB? what? Alright, so... It's going to be actually Olaf trying to backdoor bot right now so that Malzar can't push, but there's the EQ onto Lolly Brigade. Focusing the Sona is very smart because she is so squishy. A lot of damage did is just advance onto Pupils. Arcane Smash does not actually get the knock up there. The W forward from Weasel should be able to get the snare off from the E. It does manage to get that. The Chase still by a Parkers onto Lolly Brigade. Lolly Brigade completely zoned out. There's a slow cord there, and a lot of damage from Brand out with that Pillar of Flame. LeBlanc off to one side. Lolly Brigade does go down to the Boomerang Blade there. It is Bebe with a double kill. And Armed Weasel is left alone. It looks like he's going to go for the backfield play for the refinery, try and draw some attention away from that because he doesn't have any way to currently contest the windmill. His allies are on their way up to the top with their revives right now. Looks like they're going to hit that speed shrine, hang out for a couple seconds. Uh, that gives the opportunity for the enemy team to recall, and they could make a play off that, but instead it looks like they're going to go ahead and flowchart on down to the lower part of the map. We might see our first bottom lane ganks of the game coming out in a couple moments here. Usually after the windmill is captured, that's the best opportunity to make that play because people have to recall or people are coming back from being dead anyway, so that puts them close to that region of the map. And for those of you who aren't sure what flowcharting is, flowcharting is ganking bot lane, because if your team does not need you top, you should gank bot, and if your team needs you top, you should gank bot anyway. But there's the slow onto Fancy Wolf. The Seer actually does hit Pillar of Flame. A lot of damage out of Sever too. No, the Q from Jan is just slightly too short, and Fancy Wolf gets away. And they did a lot of telegraphing for that gank in the bottom, but uh, ended up moving up their forces to the top part of the map anyway. They're hanging around by the speed shrine. That's a great way to have map control. Control this speed shrine here. Keep vision on these two sets of bushes. Don't really give them an opportunity to push out across the map without you having a way to know about it. Oh, baby barely does not finish that storm shield capture. Armed Weasel came in for not an assassination, but just the threat of an assassination, and so Sivir had to back off. Lolly Brigade, I'm a little bit concerned for him because he is very split from his team right now. Ergot is coming down, but there's the ult on the hunt from Sivir. Lolly Brigade slowed down, Q comes across, the Q 
you from Sivir. All one last auto attack is not enough, but they're going onto Armed Weasel again. Who cares about Sona when you could kill LeBlanc instead? They do kill him. Corval roamed up from Balin, and it is actually Sauron lagging a little bit behind, but there's the call of the void. In addition to the Null Zone practice yellow drop, double kill for Brand Fancy Wolf about to go down. Also, the Suppress goes down before Baby Pop can fall. He barely lives there, does not want to stay anywhere near Armed Weasel, wants nothing to do with that. The stun from this year. Sauron getting a little bit of damage from the Malefic Vision. The Voidling doing a lot. Also, Armed Weasel does not go down, though, and it's now the damage onto Corval. Corval does not have his Berserker, his Ragnarok, excuse me, anymore. And there's a Pillar of Flame. They just need one more skill shot to land. There's the Janna, and it is Bran with the passive with the kill. Meanwhile, the drill going neutral. Yeah, MVP minions over at the uh, middle portion of the map were able to pick up a neutral against the drill while all that was going on. Uh, and it looks like Practice Yellow is going to be able to get that back, no problem. I don't think a Parker is going to be able to get there in time. Uh, this is a good opportunity for uh, Awesome Explosion plus Lolly's team to be able to secure the Storm Shield. After that engagement, J4 can't get close enough. Fancy is going to zone him away. If you want to secure the Storm Shield for your team, or if you want to get it yourself, ask one of your allies to babysit you. If you see someone else going for it, move around to these bushes, check them with your Sweeper, Grezzes, whatever attack you have, like a Sapling, in order to make sure that you can get that safely, because it does contribute a lot of damage to a fight if you're able to pick it up. There's a Clairvoyance going down over here, hits the bushes and checks the area around it. See that highlight? A Parkhurst goes in for Practice Yellow. Going in for Practice Yellow doesn't actually quite get the knockup. I think there's a twisted advance there to dodge it. So very nice use of that untargeted ability. And the windmill is going to be defended here for a little bit longer. Lolly Break Gate getting knocked up. Sona with the kill there. Or Sona with the death there. Fancy Wolf does manage to get a suppress off. But LeBlanc can't get enough damage from over the wall. So Portal almost going down there to that Vengeful Maelstrom Hawk. But it is not enough either. Saver with the kill onto Maokai. And once again, it is Armed Weasel left alone. LeBlanc very good at getting out of fights. But the rest of her team not so good. And she's just going to flowchart to bot lane. Yeah, LeBlanc's, uh, LeBlanc's sustained damage is actually pretty good, but she runs out of mana so quickly. Also, her positioning in that fight was uh, not too great for her to be able to use it. She tried to throw that ethereal chains over the wall to get the damage in from it and also to convey the storm shield damage from it as well, but uh, wasn't able to tag anyone with it. And coming down towards the bottom part of the map, High Peoples is looking for Corval. Undertow does not land. He's going to keep that axe down for a couple more seconds. We see that stun combo. Yes, it is going to connect. But he's pretty far into the tower, which means he's pretty safe. Has to back yeah, away for that has storm shield. Ragnarok available, so he can, pop, he can just pop Ragnarok whenever he wants. Yeah. As long as he has the threat of that, it's going to do good things for him. And there is the Ragnarok. That actually canceled the projectile of another grass. So that was a perfectly timed all apples. But it doesn't matter. He goes down and you're on the crescendo missing everyone. And Lolly Brigade just having to run away. It is Sivir split for the rest of the team though. So they were four versus five, even though they already killed uh, Olaf. Fancy Wolf getting Cataclysm does also get an exhausted knockup from Portal coming in. Brand in with the Conflagration and the kill goes over to Jarvan. Yeah, she only managed to tag Janna with that crescendo, very unfortunate. They were split pretty well. Tried to go for the all three instead of just going for two or one on the left or right side of that. And that Ragnarok was absolutely brilliant. Cancelled yeah. that Nether Grasp, and they were able to really put the hurt on Miles right away from it. It was a really perfect prediction. It He started it before the Nether Grasp landed, because there's a split second when it hasn't actually gone yet. And so he avoided taking that suppression completely. And misses the Undertow, but that's okay. He's not really threatened by anyone at the moment. So, uh, Sona and uh, Urga are going to be able to get the drill back for the moment. And Arn Weasel kind of hanging around. And uh, it's a little scary to do that with LeBlanc. LeBlanc's a pretty fragile champion. And you don't want to have to burn your Mimic in order to double distortion out if you are found somewhere. All right, Corvel caught out and does not have Ragnarok this time. So he is probably going to go down. There is the Null Zone from Malzahar and Brand with the kill. And with all that attention down the bottom part of the map, Urga is going to be able to take the windmill, and it looks like Sona and LeBlanc are going to go for the refinery. Uh, in the meantime, though, we're going to have Practice Yellow down here by himself. It looks like he just wants to delay or keep their attention so that they can go for that cross-map point. It looks like BB Siver is going to break off and either go for the windmill or the refinery. Let's see how they respond to this. This is a really interesting situation. They're going to send two top for Urgot. They're not going to worry about refinery at all. They can get refinery back later. They're still ahead on capture points, so that's okay. So there's the position reverse for Fancy Wolf to try to get out. Not going to be able to do so. With someone recalling, they're going to be able to pick up the windmill just fine. That's why they weren't worried about responding to that. So they sent two people top for windmill. They had somebody recall to take care of refinery because it would have taken longer for them to cross the map, I think, to go for refinery if they'd split one, 
like J4 top, Sivir across, that would have been for them to dedicate two to the top and then recall someone back for refinery. So, a lot and a lot of points exchanged just now across the map, but basically giving Gnome the Dango knows that they're ahead enough that it's going to be easier for them to take things back and to defend. So they're perfectly happy with points being exchanged. Yeah, they lose a little bit of Nexus health just because the exchange happened at all, but they're not hurting too much on Nexus health. There's still actually only one death on the entire team. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty brutal. They might be able. They might uh, break their record for time spent in dead. They hit seven earlier, and uh, this particular roster here has been doing a great job. Fancy Wolf take a lot oh, yeah. of damage though as the fight breaks out. There's a monsoon being used. Supportal gets plenty of channel time out of that. No one really there to interrupt him, or at least not wanting to rather. And uh, Lolly Brigade. Oh, airborne after airborne. He's gonna get juggled and taken down. And practice yellow is going I think he's gonna be saved. to oh! die. He goes down to the pillar of flame there at the end. So close to being able to escape, yeah. but all that crowd control combo was just a little bit too much for him. I thought I thought it was going to be enough time for him to get out. Parker is trying to capture the drill. He does not have time to do it. Knocks and Chris have charged too strong. And Corval's trying to get away down here. Does not have Ragnarok available, unfortunately, so he's going to eat all sorts of damage. And Sauron doesn't have his Nether Grasp up. Wouldn't quite need it anyway, though, I think. But you still see all of the damage coming out from Olaf there onto peoples. And Olaf really has a ton of base damage with his Reckless Sling. If he can stick to someone, he can hurt a lot. But LeBlanc walking through the Call of the Void can't finish his combo onto Sauron there. And does manage to get out after stealthing, and it looks like a little bit more migration towards the windmill, so this could be a two-cap back to Awesome's explosion, but I don't think they're going to be able to get a three-cap. I think I should go. Okay. Yeah, top part of the map, they have uh, Urgot and Sona going for it, but Fancy Wolf, there's the crescendo, but there's no follow-up damage. That's going to be an escape crescendo, and she might not be able to do it. BB Pop Sivir, Sivir pretty good at chasing. I should be able to keep up with Lolly and keep Lolly from being able to make a play somewhere. And Maokai going down again. Sauron lived there. Okay, finally. Sauron gave finally himself up. Weasel. Sauron could have lived. And it looks like Sona is going to be intercepted. So there goes that single digit death timers uh, that they were yeah, looking Sauron for. No longer having revived. Yeah, he wrecked it for his whole team. Wrecked. Destroyed. Yep, R E K T. Rip in peace. Time spent dead. Fancy Wolf's a little bit squishy on that Urgot. He's got a very glassy Urgot build. Does a lot of damage, but unfortunately does not have any survivability. Tries to swap out, but I don't know how I feel about that swap, because where was he going to go? Yeah, you do get armor magic resist while you're channeling. Your but while your health is so low... Reserve, but his health was exactly so low. It only goes so far. You want to open with that. Q. Good combo from J4. And uh, Arm Weasel and Lawler Brigade retreating up towards the upper part of the map. They have two points. They did get a hold of a third, but with this imbalanced engagement three on two, they're not going to come out too well. Yeah, and right now, giving them the Dango really needs to actually get up to the windmill because there's a huge minion wave that is almost capable of getting the neutral. But they're just going to chase the Blanc around the map. They don't care too, too much. Mirror image popped. Baby needs two more auto attacks or one more auto attack plus John W. And that was a neutral up at the top part of the map, but Parker's going to take care of that. It does temporarily stop the clock for a couple of moments, but that's soon going to start ticking down. Korval gets purged clean from the face of this Earth, unfortunately. He is going to have to go back to the Summoner platform. And uh, Fancy Wolf now it looks like he might be trying to uh, take over bottom lane here, but they need a tower. They only have no opportunities to get one. Yeah, with that suppress on the Fancy, Sauron does get exhausted near the end of it, but you cannot exhaust during a suppress. It's sort of the point of a suppress. And it is Malzahar hard with the kill, and that's gonna be game. Yep. And that means giving Gnome the Dango is gonna go on to the next round. Oh, Parker's dies at the end. Nice kill pick up by Sona. <laughs> Alright, so that is giving Gnome the Dango, aka former Clueless, aka I still wanna call them, know what they're doing. That would just be great. And they're moving on to round four. Which is the... We have no idea. I, I don't... I don't know. It should be the semifinals. Alright, so 
that is it for just kidding. We're gonna look at post game damage dealt to champions. Brand way out ahead. Actually, not even way out ahead. It's sort of Brand Silver and Malzahar way out ahead. We're not that far away from each other. No, it's a what three thousand point spread between them. Yeah, something about that. A lot, a lot of damage. And time spent dead. I want to say it was like 22 seconds. Oh, man. Lewis, that's my guess. Oh, wow. They spent a lot of time dead. 65. 65. That's not a one-digit number. That's not even less than a minute. Yeah. Oh, well. All right. So that is now actually it for round three. Round four is up next. We're going to put up a whole screen. Please turn off your ad block. Help support Dominate Dominion. Dominate Gaming. I swear, all I'm going to be doing is playing the Jinx and Vibe music, so you can go listen to that yourself in YouTube and turn off ad block, and that'd be super cool. So don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back.